Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca and today we're talking about how to get tack sharp photos with any camera. Before we dive in, I wanted to remind you, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button so that other people can find our video as well and hit the little notifications button so that you can be notified when new videos go live every week. Also, I wanted to let you know that in the description of this video, there is a link to six free lessons that I have. It's called Mom Photography 101, but even if you're not a mom, that's okay. You can still join. It's six free lessons that teaches you how to use your DSLR camera, what settings to use, how to set your white balance, things like that. If you're wanting to dive into your DSLR, jump into that free class below in the description. So today we're talking about how to get our tack sharp images. This is a question that I get a lot from photographers is how are your photos so sharp? Now I will say part of it may come into play with, um, you know, the lenses that you use that some lenses are just naturally sharper than other lenses. No matter what your lens is, there are some key settings that come into play when it comes to the sharpness of your photos. So we're going to be talking talking about our aperture or our f-stop and our shutter speed. Both of those come into play when we talk about getting those tack sharp images. So our aperture, just to remind you of what your f-stop is, that's the blurriness of your photo. So the lower your aperture, the more blurry your photos are going to be in the background. The higher your aperture or your f-stop, the less blurry the background is going to be. So let's say you have a photo with an aperture of 2.8, that background is going to be more blurry than let's say 4.0. That background's going to be less blurry. Your aperture controls the blurriness and then your shutter speed controls how quickly your shutter snaps. Shutter speed. It's, it, it sort of defines itself. But with our shutter speed, basically the we, we don't want it too slow because we want to be able to freeze motion. So if people, your subjects, maybe you're photographing young kids, if they happen to move a little bit, your photo won't be as crisp. And so we want to keep that shutter speed high enough that is capturing that movement and freezing time. A good rule of thumb for our aperture, and if you're taking notes, write this down. The higher your aperture, Sure the less light that is allowed into your image and the darker your image is going to be. The lower your aperture, the more light is allowed into your image and the brighter your image is going to be. Let's say we have a family of four that we're photographing. If we have our aperture too low, not everybody's going to be in focus because I like to think of it kind of like a radius. So if your aperture is really low, that number is really small, then the radius, that focal radius is going to be smaller. And so less is going to be in focus. Whereas the higher your aperture is, the, or the larger that number is, the more focal range is going to be in focus. And it has to do with different planes. So let's say I'm standing here and then I have my son on my lap. Because he is in front of me, we're on different focal planes. So if our aperture is too low, he, maybe he's in focus and I'm not, or I'm in focus if, and he's not. If he were right next to me and we were on the same focal plane, then we could have that lower aperture. But because he's in front of me, then to get both of us in focus, we have to raise that number a little bit. Okay. Now let's take shutter speed into consideration with your shutter speed. A good rule of thumb is just naturally, because when you click that shutter, your hand moves a little bit. And so whatever lens you're using, you want to double that to be like the minimum of your shutter speed. So your shutter speed is one over a number. So if I'm shooting with my 50 millimeter lens, I want my shutter speed to go no lower than one over 100. That's 50 times two. It can't go any lower than that because if it's any lower, naturally my photos are probably going to be out of focus just because whenever I click the shutter, the camera moves a little bit. The faster your shutter speed, the higher that number is in the bottom, then the more likely your photos are to be in focus and capture motion. So if my son were sitting here, he's two years old and he's wiggly. So if my shutter speed is at one over a hundred, I'm probably not going to get him tack sharp because he just moves a lot. He's a little toddler. I may use one over 250 or something like that. One over 300 just to capture his movement. So using our aperture and our shutter speed together will really help get those photos in focus. So a good starting point is if you're doing a family of four, I like to keep my aperture around 
around 3.2 or higher. If you go lower than that, it really comes into play of like how good is your camera and your lens and things like that. How quick are you at snapping and capturing your focal point? And so uh, for me now, I can go about 2.8, maybe a little lower, but I usually don't go lower than that. But it took me a couple years to get to the place where I was comfortable going below 3.2 just because I wasn't getting my subjects in focus. A good starting point is about 3.2, which is F slash 3.2 and sort of go from there. For your shutter speed, like I said, you don't go lower than double your focal length, but I like to go for a family with young kids, start at like one over 250 and go from there. And if your photo is too dark, use ISO to help counterbalance. If your ISO and your aperture have to be at these air, you know, these certain benchmarks, then raise that ISO if you need more, uh, more light or lower your ISO if you need less light. That's how we kind of use our settings to work together to get those tack sharp images. If you want a deeper dive into manual mode and you're like, what is ISO and things are stressing you out, then in the description, go watch my six free lessons where I break down every single one of those settings even more so that you can have a really good understanding of shooting in manual mode. And that will also help you capture those tack sharp images. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to grab those free lessons. And um, if you want to follow me on Instagram at Rebecca Rice Photography, I'm very active there. If you have any questions at all, you can comment them here in the video and I would be happy to answer them as well. So hope this was helpful and we'll see you next week for another lesson.